Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the re-recording of the Podfix series that I had previously done, Deku Dio. This series is being re-recorded because I had last updated it five months ago, which was when we had the previous chapter update. But we recently got a new one this week. With the new chapter, I was going to go record it, but I listened to some of my old ones and just felt like they weren't quite the standard I was looking for anymore. With it being an ongoing fic and new chapters... Jumping from chapter 13 to chapter 14, the quality difference would probably throw some people. And I just felt like the whole fic deserves a little better. So I wanted to take the time and quality and just go back through and and do it again because I feel like it really deserves it. And it's one that I don't mind reading again because it's very exciting. So for those of you who have not listened to Decadio or read it before, here's a summary. You work as a surgeon for an illegal underground clinic. It just so happens that this clinic here is only mostly illegal. There's a big difference between mostly illegal and all illegal. Mostly illegal is still slightly legal. Problem child. Bazooka secretly spends his nights working for an underground hospital, which serves quirkless patients, people without insurance, and those who would prefer to avoid the eyes of the law. However, after years of hard work keeping his nighttime activities a secret, his hero work and nightlife start to collide. This fic, at the time of now recording, is still ongoing. It is currently at 14 chapters with just over 50,000 words, and I'm excited to jump back into this one. Chapter 1. The Night Shift The snap of latex against skin cut through the droning hum of the broken LED. Scrubbing in? I'm half an hour into a ten-hour shift, and I already have two emergency appendectomies, Izuka groaned as he scrubbed his arms. Not to mention we got an extra assignment in English today, so I'll only get around three and a half hours of sleep tonight, if I'm lucky. You getting off soon, Ito-san? Ten minutes or so. Ito Junichiro grinned, shrugging off his pink nursing scrubs. I have some paperwork to file. I'm on this last patient before I can go, but I'll leave the mess for Michi-kun to deal with. Poor Michi-san, Izuka curled his lips into a smirk. What is it this time? Minor case of intestinal parasites. No biggie, but I'd stay out of exam room three until Michikun gets in there with the Lysol. Fun, Izuku grimaced. Well, enjoy your evening. Oh yeah, Chinese takeout and five hours of sleep, here I come. Ito-san gave Izuku a jaunty wave before heading toward the door. By the way, the shop is going to start selling a new limited All Might promotional poster tomorrow. I can pull one aside for you if you want. Have I ever said no to limited edition All Might merch? If I didn't get into UA, I'd probably be gunning for your job just so I could get the employee discount. Hey, I work two jobs for the price of one. I deserve my Mighty Tower gift shop discount. Not right now, you don't. Your shift ended 40 minutes ago. Go home and sleep. I'll catch you during my double this weekend. Without checking to see if Ito took his advice, Izuka shook out his hands and pushed into the operating room. While the room was spotless, the overhead light flickered ominously, and the checkered blue floor tiles were cracked. All of the surgical equipment lined the far wall, a tray with an array of scalpels, forceps, and clamps, a monitor connected to an old laparoscopic camera, which tended to flicker and blur when overused, a ring light jerry-rigged to an umbrella stand, and an old bypass machine that had clearly seen better days. Most surgeons would consider the room's equipment archaic, but Izuku lovingly referred to it as 21st century vintage. In the center of the room was a medical gurney, turned to operating table, with a patient, an older, slightly overweight man, with thinning gray hair, sprawled out on top of it. An IV hung from his limp arm. Ah, good, Zuku-sensei. Yoshida Nanami, a young nurse, chirped from next to the patient. I'm afraid it's just the two of us today. We were supposed to have Subaru-senpai with us, but she was called away to examine him too. Apparently the patient had an allergic reaction to their antibiotic, since she's the head nurse on call. It's fine, Izuku shrugged. It won't be the first time we've had to operate shorthanded. Not ideal, but given everything, it's honestly a miracle we have the staff we do. Patient info. Hiroto Shigeo. Male, 51 years old, 152 kilograms, quirkless, obviously since he has an appendix for us to remove, blood type A negative, came in complaining of vomiting and acute abdominal pain, and was seen by Todoroki-sensei, who after an ultrasound diagnosed the patient with appendicitis. Patient was admitted for an emergency appendectomy and was administered 76 milligrams of propofol, Two minutes ago, with automatic bolus doses every three minutes, all surgical tools have been accounted for. Great. Please hand me the number three scalpel and turn on the voice recorder. Good to go. Excellent. I'll begin by making the small incision under the patient's navel. Izuka didn't hesitate as he made the first cut into his patient's abdomen. I need a varus needle, a kelly, and two towel clips. Thanks. Izuka inserted the large needle into the incision. 
Beautiful. Okay, I need an S retractor and a trocar. Yoshida pressed a curved metal strip in the shape of an S and a small plastic port into Izuku's hand. Izuku used the S retractor to hold the incision open as he gingerly slid in the port. Great. The first trocar is in. Laparoscope. Thanks. All right. I'm feeding the laparoscope into the initial trocar. And there. Now let's see what we've got. Izuku turned his head to look at the monitor. That's not too bad, Yoshida hummed. Only moderately inflamed and low risk of post-operative peritonitis. We should be able to do this in three incisions. Easy. Can you handle the suction while passing me the trocars? Do I have a choice? Not particularly, no. Then sure, no biggie. Right. Izuku rolled his eyes. Oi, no teenage affections in the OR. Yoshida chided. Izuku made eye contact before slowly rolling his eyes again. Have a trocar ready. I'm making the second incision now. Izuku bit his lip as he slowly pressed a scalpel into the patient's skin, slicing through layers of skin and subcutaneous fat. Trocar. All right, now that's the third incision. And the last trocar, please. Great, thanks. Need... Needle driver and add some pickup? Way ahead of you, boss. Thanks. All right, I'm beginning to amputate the appendix. Come on. Gotcha. All right, I'm done with the suture loop. Scissors. Straight, right? Yep. Here you go. Okay, just a small snip and then onto the fun part. Squeezing an enlarged appendix through a 2.centimeter incision. Only you would think that's fun, Zuku-sensei. Yeah, yeah, I'm a nerd, we know. Easy now. All right. Suture kit? Now let me just close Hirota's on real quick. And done. That's tonight's first appendectomy done with. Tool count? Give me a sec here. Can't all be geniuses like you, Yoshida grumbled. All accounted for. Great. Have whoever's available take Hirota's on to recovery and wean him off of his anesthetic. He should be ready to discharge in a few hours. Standard appendectomy recovery procedures. No worries, I can take him right now. Nice try, Yoshida-san, Izuku huffed. As the operating nurse, you get the honor of disposing Hirota-san's appendix in the bio-waste receptacle and sanitizing the OR. Ugh, I bet you doctors get your jollies from forcing us poor nurses to wipe up guts all day. You say that like I didn't spend years of my childhood doing just that. Plus, if anyone takes enjoyment from it, it's Ito-san. Poor Michi-san can never get a break. I mean, fair, but that's just because he's the new guy. He'll figure out how to get Ito-kun back soon enough. You keep on believing that. Anyways, I have another appendectomy in 20, so I need to clean up. See you in a few. No thanks. I think I'll find a nice sprained ankle instead. No blood, minimal cleanup. Well, good luck with that. You'll have to race Michi-san for it. Ito-san stuck him with the cleanup for that intestinal parasites case in exam room 3. Ah, oh, yuck. Now, Shu, didn't you have another surgery? Yeah, I'm off, Izuku grimaced, exiting the OR into the dressing room and tossing his bloody gloves in the biohazard waste bin. No rest for the weary. Oi, Zuku-kun, a cheery voice called from across the dressing room. Finished up. Hey, Natsuo-senpai, Izuku grinned at his friend. Just cleaning up now, what's up? Things slowed down a bit, so Takahashi-sensei is covering your second appendectomy. I'm about to go on break, but I have a patient with a moderate staph infection secondary to psoriasis and two who had an allergic reaction to vancomycin just over an hour ago. We switched him to daptomycin, which he's responding well to, but he'll need a final look over before discharge if you have a moment. Yeah, sure thing. Enjoy your break. I wish. My biophysics midterms are coming up, so cup noodles and studying for me. Not so, Kuhn. You literally moonlight as a doctor in a very busy, only mostly illegal ER. Somehow, I think you're going to do fine on your biophysics exam. Yeah, but Zuku-kun, I don't want to be a shady, unlicensed, underground doctor. I want to be a shady, licensed, underground doctor. And apparently, medical students are expected to pass biophysics in order to get their licenses, despite the fact that we literally will never use it in practice. Ergo, studying. Sometimes I wonder about you. Fuck you, Green Bean. No thanks, I'd rather fuck your brother. Natsuo snorted. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Shoto is literally the definition of a virgin. I had to give him the talk a couple of weeks ago because Fuyumi realized Dad probably never did. Kid didn't believe me when I told him where babies come from. Where did he think babies came from? Izuku asked in confusion. You know what? Knowing Shoto-kun, I don't want to know. I've seen his conspiracy board. Oh no. If I have to suffer through this conversation, you have to suffer through this conversation. Apparently Shoto thought that the term delivery meant that children were ordered online from hospitals and then shipped to their parents. Wait, what? But he knows about genetics and stuff. I I know because he's talked about your parents' quirk marriage. 
You know those DNA testing companies that send you those kits to test your saliva? You're kidding. Please tell me you're joking. Nope. He had this whole bullshit process outlined and everything. Maybe I should leave an anonymous note for Aizawa sensei suggesting that UA does some basic sex ed. I mean, I know Shotokun is unusually sheltered, but better safe than sorry, especially since we all live with each other now. I mean, I'm all for comprehensive sex ed in school. Of course, that means that you have to sit through it too. And what do you want to bet that Midnight volunteers to teach it? You know what? You were right earlier. Fuck me. Well, I'll leave you with that horrifying thought. Sutomu-kun has the paperwork that you need. Great, thanks. Best of luck with your studying. Izuku quickly finished changing and washing his hands before heading out to grab his new patient's chart. Yo, Sutomu-kun. Heard you got a patient for me. Sure do, Zuzu Bean. And he's a real cutie, too. Matsumura Sutomi had a large personality. If fast, Izuku would describe him as flamboyant. Natsuo would probably use the words flaming gay. He stood at over six feet tall with bulking muscles and a shaved head. His hand-tie-dyed scrub served as a bright contrast to his dark skin, and he was liberal with his application of makeup in various luminescent shades. Sutomi-kun served as the night shift administrator, meaning he handled front desk and patient intakes. He was a natural with the patients, but his supernatural ability to get doctors to turn their paperwork in on time was his most impressive skill. If Izuka didn't know any better, he'd say it was his quirk. Yeah, because a facial staph infection is real cute, Izuka snorted, peering at the file handed to him. Izuka froze, eyes widening. Something wrong, hun. Let's just say I have a history with this patient. It would be a conflict of interest for me to treat him. Really? You strike me as the type who would treat your enemies on the battlefield. Well, luckily you're not going to treat him. You're just going through his discharge paperwork with him. You're right. I swore when I took this job I'd take care of all who walk through our doors equally no matter who they are. And I meant that. It's his reaction I'm worried about. Maybe if I wear a disguise? No, that's weird. What about a surgical mask and cap? I could pretend to have a cold. Zuzu Bean, you're mumbling again. Oh, sorry. Don't worry about it. I think I figured it out. Just leave it to me, yeah? All right, hon, if you're sure. In that case, I bestow upon you the most important quest. Harken for I, Matsumura Sutomi. Do charge you to wield this mighty weapon known as paperwork and discharge the patient. I accept this quest. Verily, and will set off at once. Izuka laughed, grabbing the file from Sutomi-kun and marching toward exam room two. On his way, Izuka snagged a surgical mask, cap, and a pair of gloves from medical cart, which he put on. He then removed his ID from his chest and slipped it into a spare pocket. Standing in front of the door, Izuka took a deep breath before knocking twice. Come in. Stealing his nerves, Izuka entered the room. Shigaraki Tomura-san, Izuka asked in a low tone. Already knowing the answer... Inside the exam room, Shigaraki sat, perched on an exam table, Kurigiri shifting ominously in the chair next to him. Yeah, who are you, NPC? I'm one of the doctors on staff. I'm here to go through your discharge paperwork with you, Izuka replied, purposefully withholding his name. About time. I was supposed to be back at the bu- back to my home base hours ago. I apologize for any inconvenience, but it is hospital policy to keep you a while for monitoring in case you have a recurrence of your allergic reaction. Normally we'd like to keep you for four hours rather than two, but unfortunately, due to our quasi-illegal status, we just don't have the resources. You seem to have responded well to the epinephrine injection and new antibiotic. But I'm going to send you home with an EpiPen, just in case your allergy symptoms come back. Have you ever used one before? No, Shigaraki grumbled. And my HP is fine. I don't need it. Now, Tomura, Kurigiri interrupted. I'm aware of your distaste for needles, but Sensei would be most displeased if you perished while he was indisposed. Izuku grimaced under his mask. If you let Shigaraki leave without the EpiPen, then he'd be a pretty terrible doctor. On the other hand, if Shigaraki wanted to leave against medical advice and had another allergic reaction, it would prevent him attacking Yue anytime soon. Izuku sighed. Why did he have to have morals? Shigaraki-san, you like gaming, right? Think of it as a gather quest. You have to find all the knowledge and prescriptions and put them together like a riddle. When you do, you'll get a health buff. A health buff, huh? Shigaraki hummed. Fine. Where can I find this ebby pen? The administrator wearing tie-dye at the front desk has your prescriptions, but first you must, uh, receive my blessing. Did that sound like something an NPC in a game would say? Eh, close enough. Kurigiri discreetly gave Izuku an encouraging thumbs up from behind Shigaraki, and wasn't that something, getting encouragement from the villain who gave him weeks of nightmares. And how... Do I get your blessing? 
Shigaraki ground his teeth. You must listen to my information and complete your discharge paperwork, Izuka demanded. Now, let me show you how to use an EpiPen. And remember, you're at a higher risk for staph and other skin infections, which sap your HP, so wash your hands frequently and your face twice daily. And for the love of God, try not to scratch, Izuku ranted. Yeah, yeah, Shigaraki sighed. Can I go now? I mean it. File down your fingernails, play with fidget toys, put a cold compress on your neck, whatever helps. But scratching is a one-way ticket back here, and I don't want to see you around here if I don't have to. And wasn't that the most honest thing Izuku had said all night? Izuka waited for Shigaraki to nod in understanding before continuing. All right, that concludes this leg of your quest. Next, you must venture to the front desk and trade in this paperwork for your prescriptions. Finally. Come, Kurigiri, let's get out of this dungeon. Izuka waited for the door to shut behind the two before peeling off his face mask and slumping to the floor. Holy crap. He almost couldn't believe Shigaraki didn't recognize him. It was probably only the fact that no one would ever expect a hero student to be working in a quasi-illegal underground clinic that saved him. There was a knock on the door. Zuku-sensei, you in there? Yoshida-san's voice rang out from the other side. Yeah, Izuku groaned. Yoshida opened the door. Someone just came in with a compound tibia fibula fracture. We managed to stem the bleeding, but it's going to need to be set surgically. Lucky me, Izuku pulled himself off of the floor. Well, no rest for the weary. Let's go. By the way, Zuku-sensei, I heard you did a great job with your last patient, the one with the staph infection. I overheard that guy who looks like he's made a mist, who I guess is his dad or something, talking to Sutomu-kun. Apparently, he's never seen a doctor that was able to connect with his kid or get him to comply so well. He mentioned that he was going to bring the kid here from now on just to see you. Was this shift cursed or something? And Izuka still had another seven hours. Fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. All right, listeners, this concludes chapter one of Deku Dio. I'm super excited about doing a re-recording for podficking this one. Let me know your all's thoughts and reactions so far. And as always, thank you so much for listening.